Hey everybody, welcome to the Glasses Push. My name is Chuck, and today we're discussing the latest short story collection by Stephen King. It's called If It Bleeds. I'm really excited to talk to you all about it, and I'm sorry it's been so long since my last video. If my new glasses are any indication, I have been busy being the front man for you too. Now, on to the short story collection. If It Bleeds contains four new short stories by Stephen King. It is anchored around the titular story, which is If It Bleeds, which is a sequel to The Outsider, which is a sequel to the Bill Hodges trilogy. Now, key thing, before you get into this, just know that if you care about spoilers at all, and you would like to go into the Outsider and the Bill Hodges trilogy unspoiled, do not get this book. Just turn off the review now. Uh, I don't know if there's an ad hidden, maybe click to that so I can in five years get like five cents. Uh, but, but then just go and read the other books first, because... This thing spoils things, and Stephen King does not give an F about spoilers. Uh, maybe that's because there isn't an F in spoilers, but we'll see on that. But going to that knowing that, you know, one of these stories is going to spoil potentially four books for you. So you got that to look forward to. But enough about that. Let's talk about the three isolated new short stories. The book starts off with Mr. Harrigan's phone, which is an interesting meditation on both technology and relationships between people. This is a, another book that kind of, fo or another short story, I should say, that focuses on a younger child being uh, a, a mentee for an older figure. Uh, it's uh, kind of like a less sinister version of apt pupil, but as the story unfolds, nothing ever quite will go the way you think it does in a Stephen King story. It takes some interesting twists or some interesting notes on on technology, about, you know, be careful what you wish for. But ultimately, while it is very enjoyable, the there aren't high highs or low lows. It's an enjoyable Stephen King, but this is the type of story I believe that he could write on autopilot. Completely serviceable, but ultimately unremarkable. The next story is called The Life of Chuck, and yes, it is my favorite of the bunch, and no, it has nothing to do with the fact that it has my name, and yes, I lied a little bit about that, but even if I were not named Chuck, this would still be not only the best short story in this collection, but I would posit it is one of the best short stories that Stephen King has ever written. It is structured in three very unique parts, which I think alone makes it a, a fairly unique uh, amongst his short stories, in which each of these three parts is stylistically very, very different. You have one that is very sci-fi, mysterious, just raising tons of questions, a very interesting character building in this. The world building is phenomenal. Stephen King doesn't play in what would be something like sci-fi too often, so when he does, I think it's a joy, and it just creates some great mysteries. The second part you get this just fun, freewheeling Stephen King, uh, just just really 
character inner monologue focused and it it's just fun lighthearted, and then these two chapters set you up for a finale that is both emotional and and also you know a little spooky we're getting some spooky king in here uh mr harrigan's phone does have its spooky elements as well but this last one is this last part of the life of chuck is you know really you know king at its roots with uh, as roots with a mystery box of sorts that will be opened some spooky elements but an incredibly satisfying emotional punch so the fact that this story is so varied in its approach and that each one of these three distinct styles is done so successfully just incredible absolutely love this thing to pieces uh, the life of chuck is well worth the price of admission for if it bleeds next we have the titular story if it bleeds so this story is following holly gibney who did make an appearance in The Outsider and was also a part of the Bill Hodges trilogy. As I said before, King doesn't care about spoilers at all and he will happily tell you the main beats of all of the previous characters story in this book or in this story I should say. Now that isn't to say that it's not enjoyable and that isn't to say that it is going to take away too much uh, because of course the popular meme is that Stephen King doesn't know how to end a book so by him revealing the key plot points in a book he is more setting you up to appreciate the journey which is really what Stephen King is great about. An, an incredible journey, fantastic world building, and just believable, unique, relatable characters. And all of those things are on full display in If It Bleeds. Holly Gibney is a very odd character, uh, eccentric, maybe a little bit very particular he clearly has a ton of fun writing her and it's it's a lot of fun living in this character's world holly seems to follow uh, fall into creature feature type stories and it is enjoyable but it does go on a little bit long and the finale once it comes, it happens really fast. How, how Holly tackles problems in the finale is basically something that just pops up out of the blue. And then you get an explanation later, but you didn't really care. It, it wasn't foreshadowed. And I, I think because of that, the, the editing, especially on this, is a little weak that if uh, you know an ad for the for uh, Neil Gaiman's master class that has been all over YouTube lately if that's to be believed that your your second draft of a story is making it look like you knew what you were doing all along and if you want to accept that uh, statement as fact, then I believe that Stephen King's editor and Stephen King failed in not telegraphing certain things earlier in the story. And when something does have such a profound impact on the end of the story, you would expect to at least see little glimpses of it Otherwise, it's just like, okay, that's incredibly random. Uh, just kind of roll the dice. Sure, okay, that happened.
fine. Still very enjoyable characters and it's taught suspenseful writing all the way, uh, in, including the a mechanism that Stephen King doesn't always use, but when he does, it's very interesting, the telegraphing an event that is going to happen later by saying, oh, well, this character met this fate, or this is the last time that this character saw this person. It sets up suspense in a really interesting way, which I guess I could say that to a certain degree it may minimize the impact of the inclusion of spoilers because sure you know what happens but you don't know how it happens you don't know the weight of what this occurrence is and and you don't know how the characters are going to react and how exactly they feel about it which is much more important to Stephen King and this uh you know he he nails it Holly's a great character. We do get glimpses into other characters, but really it's the Holly show. And when you have a character that that's great, you really don't care. You do have a very ominous and unique antagonist in this story as well. And so props to King for constantly coming up with new creepy ideas uh, and to make something as innocuous as going to a mall super creepy, uh, which I guess during coronavirus times, you know what, maybe maybe Stephen King needs to up the creepy notch a little bit because 2020 is just ripping him off left and right and kind of outshining him here. So, yeah, pick it up, Stevie boy. So, with that, we go into the last story of... The collection which is rat now this is stephen king going into his most comfortable and most favorite territory not only do you have the the possibly supernatural but you also have him having another main character who is a writer so this is a well-worn path and interestingly enough, has quite a few echoes to the very first story in the collection, which almost makes me knock down both Mr. Harrigan's phone and Rat. Uh, and you see my dog is just like, well, tell him about that part. Look, I'm going to tell him about that part. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to it. You're really rudely interrupting me here. Look, my, my dog is probably an even bigger critic than I am, so... Yeah, you're just gonna hear that for the rest of this, because, you know, my dog has things to say, too, and I'll try and translate as best I can. So, so both of these characters... Uh, both of the char main characters in both Rat at the end of this collection and, uh, and the young kid in Mr. Harrigan's phone both end up with very similar situations that they're running into, and it makes it feel like Stephen King is even more on autopilot with how similar these stories are. I would say that Rat is very likely the weakest story among the collection, It, but that isn't to say that it isn't without its charms. It's also the absolute strangest in this collection and the one that will have you wondering what really is going on the most. So where that leaves us from an overarching story perspective is three er, is, is one incredibly unique story one that is a, a, a very solid continuation of a character's arc through several, several Stephen King books and bookended by two stories with very, very similar themes. Of course, this is Stephen King. This is all written very well. It's page-turning, 
the writing is taut. It's entertaining when it needs to be. It's emotional when it needs to be. But when you have two semi-lackluster stories in there and, and one that, you know, the, the spoiler thing shouldn't be as big of a deal as it is, and this won't affect my rating, it is still obnoxious that one of the four stories has huge spoilers for the rest of his stuff. But at its point, it's serviceable, not too, not too great, not too terrible. So what does this leave us with is, you know, very likely, you know, I'm going to say a, a 78. So it's, it's slightly above average. It would be a much lower score were it not for the life of Chuck, which is damn near a hundred, if not a hundred out of a hundred. And the, the score of the book is just pulled down by two lackluster stories. And, and, you know, then, you know, buoyed a little bit by, you know, a pretty average 75, say, story for If It Bleeds. So, with that, I would highly recommend that you get this, if for nothing else than The Life of Chuck. But if you're a Stephen King fan, and especially a, if you're a Bill Hodges fan and an Outsider fan... You deserve to check this out. This is this is great Stephen King writing, but with some lackluster stories. I will say though that I would way recommend this over Sleeping Beauties and uh, and however uh, Outsider. I would say overall is actually better than this story because of uh, 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 just the first part of the outsider the uh the mystery in it and the and the tension in the first part of the outsider is is just one of the one of the best things that Stephen King has probably done in the past 20 years since uh, uh since I don't know under the dome probably but uh, a, a a very good collection that I would definitely recommend that you check out. You're not going to regret your time with it. Now, at this point, I'm curious, have you read this? What have, what have you thought about the stories? And, uh, you know, let's actually talk about this puzzle a little bit. The, the first and the fourth story. For those of you who've read now, uh, please in the comments, let's be considerate of people that don't want spoilers. But I would love to talk to you about, do you think there's some meaning about the, uh, the similarities in the, in the stories at the beginning of the end? Perhaps bookends? Uh, are there, uh, how, would, how would you rank this in terms of Stephen King's recent output? And uh, are there any things that you think I should check out? It's been far too long. I look forward to talking to you in the comments. And uh, until next time, this is The Glasses Push, out.